Bilder ist. What do you think is the largest mammal that you can knock out with a single punch? Largest? What? Oh, fuck. It's gotta be some kind of monkey, but not a big monkey. Like a chimp? I think yeah. you can deck a chimp? I don't know. Chimps are pretty strong. I've heard um, a lot of terrifying things about chimps. I have too. Over the years. Let's let's go with a maybe a dog, but I don't I don't like the idea of me punching an animal. Let's say a golden retriever. Keep it with golden. Damn. Maybe a golden, golden retriever. Golden punching up on a golden retriever. I would never. I do not condone no, animal course. abuse. No, of course. Absolutely <laughs> not. But in an extreme circumstance, uh -huh. you would do what has to be done. All right, so our next question, if you can intervene with any historic event in history and change it, Ooh. what are you jumping in on? Are you stopping John Wilkes Booth from shooting Abraham Lincoln? You know? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think we should Sorry. bring assassinations hey. back. Um. Hey, crazy right now. <laughs> oh my God. Ooh, what would I intervene in? Honestly, I've been doing a lot of research into the Hindenburg. The Hindenburg? Yeah, the explosion of the Hindenburg. Okay, can we rotate around this way? Yeah, for sure. The, that audio. Yeah. The Hindenburg tragedy. It's a giant fucking blimp. They used hydrogen gas to power it and to keep it floating. No one really knows what started the fire that happened on the Hindenburg. Okay. But a lot of people suspect that it was said Somebody smoking room. But basically, spark turns to flame, whole oh thing goes God. up, uh, kills hundreds of people. Hundreds of people? Hundreds of people came crashing down. And they were like airborne at this moment. Yeah. Um, and crazy, but there was a monopoly on hydrogen at the time. The company who, who uh, built the Hindenburg had basically... Um, made it to where they were the only ones in control of the gas hydrogen. That company ended up like falling and really failing because their, their number one product exploded in the sky. So what's a lesson you think you've had to learn the hard way, but you're thankful that you did in retrospect? Uh, I know the answer for that one immediately. Well, okay, what is it? <laughs> I think like in childhood, being a middle child, I developed mm. a unnecessary need for like attention. So like I was, as a kid and into like my early adulthood, very much like attention seeking behavior, mm. uh, whether that be like acting out or sometimes it was like doing something really good, but it was always for like my own like, kind of other people's perception of me or like trying to control that narrative when really you have no control over that narrative. Um, and then I pulled a prank in college. You're aware of this one. Wait, oh, the college remind uh, me of the clown prank. prank in 2016 when Stephen King's It movie was coming out. There was like a clown frenzy where people were dressing up as clowns with weapons everywhere. Oh my gosh, and I remember I, this, yes. actually. People I, were on college campuses with yep. machetes and a and whole it was, bunch of it nonsense. It was happening everywhere. So the, before pulling said prank, I thought that it was going to be fine because this was happening everywhere. Uh, but I made the stupid decision to tweet that there was a clown with a machete on my college campus. And purely just for shits and gigs, but also to like kind of get attention myself, you know? And this uh, tweet like locally went viral. College campus gets shut down. They shut down the campus. They, they put it on lockdown. Police Yo. everywhere. <laughs> um, I got charged <laughs> with uh, inciting a riot and with filing a false police report. And that was the death of my attention-seeking habits. <laughs> Shit. So I think that, that was a hard lesson to learn. I had to go to court four times in six months of probation. But it could have been much worse, and it should have never happened in the first place. But it did point out to me that I had this negative behavior that had carried through my childhood mm. into adulthood that needed to die in my adulthood. So wow. it's gone, uh, mostly. <laughs> <laughs> How do you define what growth or success looks like in your life? Mm. I think, obviously, 
society kind of has its own definition of what success is. Of course. And I many, think, many, right? Yeah, I think uh, growth and like figuring out where you want to be, how you want to get there. I think a, a big part of that is having the ability to step outside of what the society expectations of those things are mm. and figuring out what it is for you as an individual. So like for me, society pretty much like teaches you like after high school, you, you go to college, you start your career after college, you work in that career until you retire and mm. then you, your life goes on from there. But for me, I am not the type of person who wants a singular career because I get bored really easily and I... And side quests are so, incredible. Yes, so I, I like to be a jack of all trades. <laughs> yeah. um, and I kind of view like success for me in terms of my relationships and in terms of like my emotional growth and where I want to be is not uh, controlled by like what my career is. A and I think agreed. I think a lot of the time society is like it's career first. Your the point of your life is to work and work hard. And I just I don't agree with that. For me, my personal growth is finding areas in my in myself that I'm not satisfied with mm. and figuring out how to improve in those areas and success from that is growing in those areas but also like having the people in place that can hold you accountable when you're not growing. Agreed. I think, Agreed. Huge. I think it's really easy to become stagnant and I think having people in your corner who are willing to be like, hey, like I'm noticing this. That's that's coming from like a place of love and my my success in my life, my biggest success in my life is my relationships and will always be my relationships and the quality of those. I think that's a beautiful answer. Thanks. Do you have a first memory of someone who believed in you who wasn't in your family? Mm, I had a babysitter. They were, it was two babysitters actually. They were, they were my next door neighbors. Their names were Renee and Mitchell. They were brother and sister and Mitchell taught me how to ride a bike uh, while Ooh. he was babysitting me. And I obviously had never ridden a bike before he's teaching me, but he was confident in my ability to do it before I even knew I could. Mm -hmm. And I do remember the impact of that on me. Cause he was like, you're already a bike rider. You just haven't done it yet kind of thing. And I carry that a lot with me even now of like when I'm trying something new that especially something I'm scared to try, I think in my head, you're already capable of doing this. You just exactly. haven't done it yet. This is huge. Yeah. So I think, I think especially when you're a kid in those like formative years, having someone who believes in you wholeheartedly without even having seen whether or not you can do something is pretty influential and kind of carries with you your whole life. On that same front, I had a history teacher who, who made a huge impact on me, but she told me a few really important things that have never left my brain. She, she told me, I always assume everyone likes me. This, and it's, it made an impre it made such a strong impression when she told me this, because I'd never even I'd always thought about that. Never considered it. And you, people get so in their heads about like, does this person like me? Exactly. Do they, do, do they not? She's like, like, I always assume, whenever I meet somebody, they already like me. We're already friends. I'm gonna talk to them and speak to them as though we already know each other in a history. It, it's kind of crazy it's you're code. saying this because you literally do do that. Yeah, but that's you talk to people like you've known them for so long already. And she's one of the original inspos for that. I love that. The That's OGs. Cool. Is there somebody right now you think deserves more praise? Like somebody in part of our culture right now who's on the come up but definitely needs more visibility? Uh, honestly, several names come to mind. I think anyone who is fighting for liberation for all all groups of people hmm. deserves more praise. Bella Hadid comes to my mind immediately just Bella because Hadid. she's very, she, I mean, she's Palestinian. She's, hmm. she doesn't care what the effects are on her career or her financial stability. She just wants to speak out 
in favor of a ceasefire and making Palestine a state. Um, and I just, I think that's really inspiring to, to know that there's something so big and not care what the consequences are on yourself to speak out in favor of liberation, I think is a pretty big deal. Um, Dua Lipa is doing the same thing right now. But when it comes to like politicians, I don't care. We can get rid of all of them. <laughs> I think yeah. it's time to rewrite the Constitution, start from scratch. But oh, they're trying. <sighs> they're actually trying. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Now I'm just a thought has sparked too. I'm remembering being in Detroit, and I was on an Uber ride to the airport, and I ended up in the car with this dude who was a professor of sociology and Ubers on the side. And so, of course, we jump in a conversation. And I remember talking to him about f the sense of feeling slightly powerless in today's mm. society when you see atrocious events, when mm -hmm. you see things that break your fucking heart. Like right now. I yeah. feel like now is exactly one of those times where I can almost barely get online without seeing something that just devastates me yeah and makes it hard to even feel comfortable going about living a happy life you know sometimes there's such an awareness that there's have-nots and people who are not experiencing a life that they're happy with that it, you almost feel guilty for <laughs> having access to the the comforts of life yeah you know I remember him telling me he was like the thing you have to understand as a young person is how much power you have mm -hmm. when you come together and the biggest lie, if you will, that people, incumbents in power, want you to believe is that you don't have a voice. Yeah, is that you can't do anything. That yes, that nothing, you might as well do nothing. Yeah. Because it's gonna be a drop in a, a drop in a bucket as yeah. it is. So why even bother? Why even try? Can you speak to that at all? Do you have anything that comes to mind? I mean, when I you think, think of this? most recently is just like the worldwide college campus protests. Yeah. I mean, these are... As we're... Yeah. We're here in UT Austin. There have been numerous protests here. Hundreds of people arrested over the course of the last six months or so protesting. Yeah. I think, I mean, th we're talking about a group of people ages 18 to 22 who have not yet really actually started their lives, who... No consequences of these things will carry on for decades. I mean, getting an arrest at an age like that, that carries with you on your record for a very long time. These are consequences that last for a really long time, and yet these people are choosing to stand up and make their voices heard rather than be silenced with UT, with Columbia, with a bunch of other schools. Basically, like, people weren't allowed to graduate for their protests. People uh, were expelled from the school. People were arrested. Um, charges uh, in UT, thankfully, like in Austin, all of the charges against UT students were dropped. But that is not the case for everywhere. And faculty is more concerned about the image of the school than the well-being of kids in a lot of these universities. So I think... I think that, just like watching the power of students kind of take on the man is really, is really cool. It's really mm -hmm. cool to watch. The kids are all right. <laughs> the kids <laughs> yeah. are all right. Would you have any advice for someone who feels this way but hasn't yet had the courage to speak up about something they're passionate about or care about in that way? Yeah. Um, I mean, what are you scared of? You might lose some relationships, you might lose the support of some people in your life, and the opinions of some people about you may change, but mm. are you being true to yourself? And are you being true to your morals and your ethics? I think that's all that really matters. Um, and I promise you, if you do start using your voice, you are not gonna be the only one speaking. Uh, and you're not gonna be the only one saying what what needs to be said. Uh, it's the ripple effect. You throw a rock in a, in a body of water and it ripples. Same thing with one person using their voice. It inspires and empowers other people to do it as well. And I think if you're thinking about 
how scary it might be to speak out, whether it be in, in favor of Palestine, whether it be about Sudan or literally any conflict that's happening in the world, if you're scared of the consequences of speaking out, you're not going to be the only one speaking. And I think there's agreed. I think there's a lot of power in knowing that. I agreed. I think it's also a question of what kind of people do you want to surround yourself with? Mm. And I think when you're courageous, when you put yourself out there, the right people are going to eventually come to surround you as you show oh, what yeah, you care sure. about. Right? Um, I often think mm. about something someone said to me several years ago, which is you are the culmination of your five closest friends. Oh, the one uh, hand, the one hand yeah. right there. And I try to surround myself with people who are like-minded to me, but not so much so that we're clones. I like having a healthy mm -hmm. debate. I like when someone presents me with new information and it changes my initial opinion. I, I do a lot of research into the things that I speak about and that's why I can say them with confidence. Mm -hmm. But if I'm presented with the right new information, then I'm gonna... I'm gonna look into change it your mind. deeper and I'm gonna change my opinion because that's what growth is. Growth is learning that sometimes you're wrong and that's okay. Yeah. Um, but I think it's really important to surround yourself with community that is also aware of that and also wants to strive to empower themselves and empower each other. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Of course. Thank you so much for going on a walk of with me. Course. Thank I you love for your a walk energy. With you. We used to do this way more often. And thank you for your time and energy. Once again, if there's anybody you think I should have a conversation with, please tag them down in the comments. If you have a great question, whether it's funny, horny, silly, weird, whatever, <laughs> drop that in the comments. It would mean the world to me. With that being said, hey, have a great day.